Hi, I'm Dave Phipp. Welcome to my home. In the off season, I like to dabble around with a handful of different things. I make wine, I keep bees, I write children's books, but today I'm gonna to show you how I make beer. All right here, first thing we gotta do is make sure this water temperature gets to 160 degrees. What happens is when we add this water to our cooler and to the grains that are sitting at room temperature, the temperature is gonna come down. They call this water in the brewing process the strike water because this is the water that touches the grains or strikes the grains. All right, we got our temperature where we want it here. And now we're gonna pull this off. And we're gonna add the uh, water to our cooler down here. Now that we got the water in the cooler, we're gonna slowly add our grains to the water as we stir it up. All right, so first thing we're gonna add is our 12 pounds of two row. So we'll just slowly add it in here. And as we add it, we're gonna just keep stirring it up and we're gonna get a nice aroma in the air. Next, we'll add this eight ounces of the Caramel 40. Caramel 40 is really similar to the two row, but what they do, just like coffee, they end up cooking these grains at different temperatures and then it changes the flavor of the grain and it also will change the color of the beer. And the last thing we'll add is our carapils. The ingredients are nice and fresh, just like when you're cooking anything. The fresher the ingredients, the better. For me, making my own brew, it ended up starting just as something to do, something to learn about uh, in the off season when I had time. Now what ends up happening is like anything, you end up really liking the flavor of, of a particular beer and then you can kind of manipulate the flavors the way you like it. I'd love to say it saves you money, but it doesn't. <laughs> All right, as this was soaking over the course of the last hour, we moved our grains outside, and now we're ready to drain the first runnings of our water out of the uh, mash tun and into the boiling kettle. Now this water is technically now called our wort, and this first few gallons right here that come out will actually be the sweetest part of the whole thing. And then once we get all this out, we're gonna move our boil kettle onto our furnace and we're gonna bring it to a boil as fast as we can. All right, so we just got up to a boil here and we're gonna add our first hops. These hops right here, it's one ounce of those Zythos pellet hops. We'll just slowly add these here and we'll kind of stir them in. We're 40 minutes into the boil. We got about 20 minutes left. We're gonna add our second hop addition. We got about a minute left in the boil. We're gonna add two ounces of these hops here. So this two ounces right here will be a lot of our flavoring hops. We're gonna let that boil for one more minute. And then we're gonna pump cold water through this chiller. Out of there, we're gonna cool this down as fast as we can cool it down. We'd like to get it down to around 70 degrees. All right, now we've got it down to 70 degrees. We're gonna take our chiller out. We'll set our uh, brew kettle up top and then we're gonna siphon off into our carboy. We're gonna add our yeast and then this will go on top. And what the airlock does is it allows air to escape out, but no air to come in. So as the yeast ferments with the sugar, turns into alcohol, it'll expel the CO2 from the top, but no air will be allowed to get in. All right, we're back inside. And now to finish this up, we're gonna let this sit for about a week and it'll finish fermenting. And then at the end of that fermentation process, we're actually gonna dry hop this beer so it has a nice strong hoppy flavor like all IPAs are known for. And then at the completion of those 17 days, we'll put this into a keg and it'll be ready to serve.